The session is about networking. What we'll try and do is to tell you why networking is important and then some tips on networking and then I would like, um, you know, a more interactive session where each of us shares uh, their experience of networking and see how it can benefit the others. The whole idea of this session is to see some of the success stories from your own lives and your professional lives and business lives, how networking has helped you and that should hopefully encourage others to network more. It's a very famous book called Mega Trends, and uh, this is what uh, John Nasbitt has to say about networking. Essentially once, uh, you know, um, to use a technical term, once the protocol is established in, in a particular network where two or more people are communicating, then the, you know, there is a lot of um, credibility and there's a lot of acceptance of what the other person says. Say in a forum like this, when you talk to your, you know, other uh, partners here, there's already a credibility, there's always already a common base that all of you are here attending this session. You know, you know about each other's background. So, therefore, whatever you say starts to have a lot more uh, credibility than, you know, in your marketing brochures or on what is available on your website. This, you know, the credibility factor increases significantly when you are on a common flat platform like this or many other common platforms that you will be attending later on, you know, in life. And, and this way, the, the communication, you know, as opposed to an email or, or anything with face-to-face, -face, where there is uh, credibility, the, the efficiency of that communication is greatly enhanced. So that's, that's the whole idea about networking. What does networking really do? It, it gives you information. It gives you information about opportunities. Your partner might know that a particular state government has a new contract or, you know, so-and-so person is, 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 is like this. If he's a potential buyer, this is how he, he behaves or these are his social habits or these are his, you know, personal likes and dislikes. You get a lot of information which you cannot get otherwise. You, you can't get it on companies' websites. You can't get it, you know, uh, through uh, magazines, newspapers, or Googling it. You will not get that information, the sort of information that you can get in a, in a networked uh, situation. And also about organizations, about new companies coming up, about new, for example, for you guys, a new uh, venture capital fund which has come up, which is focused on your use because we all don't have every bit of information that we need for doing our business and you never know when that next piece of information is available and with, from whom it might come from. Also it helps give you a platform to give information about yourself, about your company, about what you want to do in future and so on and so forth and that enables the, you know, the people participating in that network to, to get in touch with you later on in life and tell you, hey, you know, you wanted to do this, here's an opportunity. And, and that's, that's happened to many one of us, you know. So essentially what networking does is, as we said earlier, it's a form of communication which is very efficient, which is highly credible, which, and which then can lead to a lot of opportunities and uh, sharing of common knowledge. You know, I may know some people when we meet and you might want to meet those people and through me uh, you will be able to, you know, enter my network, right? So it, it suddenly increases the network. By networking you increase your network because once you network with somebody you get introduced to that person's network and so on and so forth. Any questions or any thoughts or any ideas that you want to share at this point? Uh, networking, why network, you know, uh, in this context, thinking uh, social networking would be the 
right word instead of just networking, isn't it? Okay, so it could, you know, networking can be business networking, can be social networking. Uh, here the context is of course primarily on business, I think we are all here. I meant business social networking, I mean social okay. as in business context I said. Right, that's right, you know, I agree with that. Any other thoughts? Uh, uh, networking, there are certain protocols you said. Uh, Indian cultural uh, networking is different from US cultural. Right. That's what I experienced. Like in US, people go introduce themselves, and there is a expectation that you just say, "This is these are this is me, and this this is what we can do." And there's a straight business to business networking. Right. In India, I find that culturally uh, a lot of resistance. Even in in me to just proactively go forward and introduce myself in a business context. I agree. I agree. Socially, yes. Uh, over a period of time, I can broach, uh, I can pro I can tell over, a p after the estab relationship is established, I can talk about my business hmm. and what I can offer. But in a business uh, networking, I never felt comfortable. Yeah. I agree with you. See, I think in India, we, we have a lot of importance to our social status and we are um, somewhat shy, we are sort of a shy as a nation, we are a little shy. And uh, I guess it's, it's again due to historical reasons and, and so on and so forth and we are very conscious about status and, and caste and, and, and all those things are still in our minds, when a day, we still carry some of the, the baggage of the past with us. But it is slowly disappearing, you know, and each one of us has to make that extra effort to, to go forward and, you know, start that business conversation. But sometimes it always therefore helps when you meet somebody and you know you see that he's from L and T or he's from uh, you know ACC, then you probably might want to start by saying, "I know somebody from ACC. Do you know him?" ACC has five thousand people, right? So you know it's very unlikely that unless he is in the board of directors, that person will know him. But that's probably a way of establishing a common platform that you know somebody that he knows or she know and that's that's equally true for especially in the Indian context if there is a lady then you feel a little more at least some men do feel a little more awkward in, in trying to introduce yourself you know from the start that's another difference say in Indian and Western cultures and ladies would even find it equally difficult to go and introduce themselves uh, to uh, to a man even in a business context and those are the things that the more aware we are of these things, the, the more likely are we to be able to overcome them. But I think the way to, in India, you have to, you know, start with some reference, like, you know, in India, everything works by reference, so, <laughs> so does networking. So you have to probably start with a reference saying that, you know, you're from uh, TCS and I had a friend in TCS many years ago. It, it might be of no real relevance, but that's the way to you know, break the ice, so as to speak. Yeah. yeah. Uh, networking is one of the activities what we would be doing uh, as a uh, setting up a business. Right. Now, it's a networking, outcome of a networking is uh, uncertain uh, in terms of what would happen next. Yeah. So, I can't really quantify the value, how much time or resources I spend on that. How does one take a trade-off? It, it would be very individual uh, on case-to-case -case basis, mm. but then would there be any guideline that how much time to spend on networking? Okay. True. See, I think uh, especially when we are, many of us are early stage businesses and we really don't have a well-defined business development process in place. Most of the time, I'm the only marketeer for my company and, you know, I start, what do, how do I start my, is to do you know, calls about people who may know people who may be wanting our product or service. That's, that's how you start because you're not going to start cold calling on day one. You'll start with getting a few easy clients, right? And therefore, networking is probably one of the best ways for early stage businesses to get their first clients because the first clients will only come from people with whom you already have some sort of connection and, and therefore, uh, you need to do that more 
then when you are a fairly well established company i'm saying to get clients only for for getting business and then you will network for other reasons but for the first few years of a company's life you are interested in getting primarily two things money and clients so you would spend more and more time on networking doing these two things than you would do later on in your uh, you know in the life cycle of the business in the context uh, as he was saying in the context of india in the first we actually establish a social network then we use the social network to actually do business instead of first establishing a business network and then try to socialize with them first we establish a social because unless somebody remembers me for something it could be a wish i wished him on a new year or it could be something uh, it is very unlikely to to uh, get a business uh, relationship going from that point onwards it it's so difficult because you know you are actually meeting thousands of people you have to instantaneously decide uh, if you are meeting in a business conference or anything just just meet them hi hello hi and all that then you just filter out how many people you want to go and talk to once again so that your product is might be applicable for them mm. in that context you want to achieve that goal but to achieve that goal first there should be a, a an object you're saying it could be a social object like you're saying uh, acc you know i know somebody from acc it could be one thing but there could be hundreds of things so in first we establish that relationship in india and then go into the business uh, thing i have seen success through that model okay yeah go ahead mm. i believe the primary reason you know uh, the, as he was saying that we need to establish uh, some sort of a social relationship first to then go go ahead for a business relationship i think that is the result of a stigma that we inherently have uh, with most of the indians that business is not something really respected or a business person is not somebody who is re actually revered as a esteemed individual you know i actually find it uh, you know you know not very relevant in these days because i i have i have been going to some conferences and i find it absolutely comfortable straight away going into uh, going and smashing into somebody and talking about my business what do you do and then uh, try to find some uh, you know collaboration aspects and try to you know pro probably work out some customer referencing system on, and something straight away and i the, even he doesn't find it you know awkward at all because that is the primary purpose we are there and that is the primary purpose we are communicating him him with so you know i i find it absolutely you know you know uh, unintruding to straight away start a business conversation uh, you know that's just my view so yeah it's absolutely true in a business uh, conference the object is very obvious but in other context you know when you're not you know, obviously you can go to 10 or 5 conferences in a year that could be the limitation that will limit your network uh, if we can actually grow in other ways it could be through social networking initially and then try to use because you always not have the business conferences right yeah i think it, th there are two parts to it one is as you rightly said it depends on the context if if the platform is like this is uh, this is a bus the, this this platform is a business context you can straight away start talking about uh, business but if it's a marriage when I mean, most of the stuff that we go to is a marriage or you know some other ceremonies or like a festival and so on there you have to you, as as you probably said you have to do it in in a two way mode you'll start by saying you know uh, how do you know this person or you know uh, how, what are your children doing this this sort of standard uh, questions or it's very hot today or it's whatever that that's the opening uh, gambit i would say and then move on to say what do you do because straight away you don't ask a person what do you do and sometimes in india it's it sounds a little rude straight away i say you know what do you do and, and people are not carrying their uh, name tags on their uh, shirt or or whatever so you will have to first preface it with something which is again the common factor why both of you are there in that particular social gathering and then move on to saying you know what do you do or where do you stay and i think in india we, we ask a few you know we ask quite a few questions before getting down to the point then then going straight to the question so you'll say you know where do you stay where's your office and then you'll start start asking about you know uh, so it it you probably said rightly that it takes a little longer in india to 
establish that network or, or establish the business part of the networking then probably in the US or in the West because they have got used to this uh, networking and we are still in the process of doing that. So even networking is evolving in India. Yeah. It would be particularly dif difficult for women, don't you think, uh, es establishing uh, networks in social context? As you said just now, uh, just go break the ice. Imagine, okay, if it were a business conference, I makes agree. sense, but, but otherwise. I know, because in India, you know, especially in a, in a wedding format, you know, the, <laughs> yes. the women and the men really don't don't mix because you know they're all on on two sides and and stuff like that so it is definitely a, a can you suggest some uh, but then ways? i guess probably you could you know it, it's my guess is as good as yours but if if you already know somebody there and then you you identify that this is the person that you want to meet then you would rather do it via that person uh, than approaching directly because then it will it will look a little awkward Yes. That's all. Maybe other people can suggest better ways of doing that. This is what came to my mind. Yeah. See, one more thing normally what we do is, uh, see, we normally mix social concepts with the business, which we, we should not do normally. See, in a social function, so it should work as a social function. And if you get an approach, yes, get the approach, and officially you need to seek a confirmation that, okay, I want to meet you for this purpose then uh, going for a specific, a specific appointment or with a prayer information, maybe more uh, uh, I think effective. Otherwise, what happens is normally if you start mixing business with social functions, then we miss out in the business. Okay. Yeah. In fact, I see it as an advantageous thing for women to connect because, you know, rather than asking a man directly about the business, if you go through his wife or daughter or uh, sister <laughs> and then you build uh, uh, credibility there, yeah. That's what, uh, that's it's, that's the it, point it will have a prob more probability of uh, getting success and maybe you know the deal I, that you can clinch could be totally off the technical and commercial aspects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I, I, I just yeah. react to your point and maybe somebody else can react as well. The point is, do we have that sort of time to just do the social bit in a social gathering and, and leave the business out for some other time? You know, people are busy. I think we all have very little time, especially entrepreneurs have very little time and they want to, you know, to do things pretty quickly. So I think having established a certain social, you know, connection, I see no problem in, in going on to the business. After all, in, in most ways, uh, we are all in business, right? Whether, even whether we are in academics or we are working somewhere or we are, we are an entrepreneur, we are all in doing something which has commercial value, right? Uh, and uh, that's what we are all here for, uh, you know. And so the, I see no problem in moving from uh, a little bit of social or small talk or whatever, or whatever you might call it, and then moving on to why, you know, w what is the main objective of you, your working and so on. I don't know if anybody wants to react to that. Social... Uh I think we are all, we all might be in different worlds. What a person thinks is networking, let's say he meets two, three people in a month. In his world, it's networking. For another person, meeting uh, 50 people a month is networking. So inside of this person's mind, uh, two, three per peop, uh, people's mind, uh, he would even want to go for a holiday with him to, uh, before he starts talking about business. And for the other person who, who in his world networking is f meeting and talking about his what he can do to 30, 40 <coughs> people, for him straight talking to talking about business, hi, two, three sentences of social connections, and then the third sentence is, I do this, what? That kind of uh, world, I think that's where the social and the business uh, thing is colliding. How, where is the balance? I think it's about the product uh, and the... Uh, world in which a person is coming from. Okay. Yes, please. Yes, or maybe is also maybe like uh, what we do in uh, 
come uh, this kind of uh, meetings so they can also wear some kind of a tag or something like that where they show their what they are doing so web applications or web designing or something so they'll have people coming and talk to talking to them instead of they going and approaching other people possibly uh, can i make a point i have been throughout in my career uh, i have somehow landed up in a position where i was the only woman and there were only guys around right from the time when i attended my first trainers training program at entrepreneurship development institute of india in 1984 okay there were 22 participants 21 guys 22nd participant women that was me and uh, then i was in marketing at data pro and currently i am a training and placement officer at uh, cummins engineering college and uh, till last year i was the only lady tpo and uh, wherever i went like you know our tpo is always looking out for people who can employ their students and uh, like i would always go and talk to people directly and uh, nobody was offended uh, and especially if you are a woman and i have also conducted entrepreneurship development programs for women and it is my observation that if a woman goes and approaches a man and she introduces herself as an entrepreneur then men are more likely to support a woman than a man um in my very first entrepreneurship development program which was held in 1985 there was this lady who wanted to start her own bakery and uh, she went to the owner of hindustan bakery which is one of the best bakeries in pune and she approached him and she said that she wanted to start a bakery now this gentleman at that time had started a new unit he is is an established firm but in those days he had started one more unit and he said oh are you interested in starting this bakery then please take over this project report and he handed over his own project report to her uh, similarly i have also conducted a entrepreneurship development program for science and technology women at thane and there also wherever my ladies went and they approached all the uh, entrepreneurs they got excellent response from those guys this was again in 1986 uh, i had a similar kind of an experience uh, with myself as well as with my women entrepreneurs at sholapur and kolapur then for my edi program i was in uh, where was i uh, ahmedabad and even as a training and placement officer i found that uh, whenever i have gone and visited companies at hyderabad or bangalore if you are a woman and uh, you make a call people listen to you and they give you an appointment also that's an advantage of being absolutely. a woman you you find even in marketing of, yes yeah. it helps being a woman absolutely you see a lot of companies uh, for cold calling will employ women because it's difficult for somebody to you know shoo them off uh the, compared to men you know so that that sort of common knowledge but you know coming back to you know having the you know it's also a matter of confidence that you're confident about your product you're confident about what you are then you are more you know you will go out and and meet people we we all have different personalities and i'm not getting into personality you know some people are you know aggressive and want to assertive and so on and so forth and they want to go forward and meet people and so on and some people are sort of uh, you know not so uh, outgoing but if you are confident about your product you're confident about the way you know you are then it, it that is what will egg you on to go forward in in any context and and here i'm not only talking about business conferences but even in a social setting because you never know what the next guy might be able to do for you uh assume that we met some person in a business conference or a social conference we exchanged cards and we said that this is what uh, i can do in terms of you know this is my product this is what uh, i can serve you or something like that now what do you suggest what do you think is the way forward from there yeah we'll we'll come to that what what we should do post that but this is you know how to begin again each one of us has different experiences uh, i am a smoker so you know usually nowadays of course you can't smoke anywhere but earlier earlier days you could go out in a corner and and smoke and that's that's the place where you start networking because you know you light somebody's cigarette and you say you know hi what do you do and and that's how uh, 
uh, you know, a lot of networking happens. But that is one example. There are so many other examples. You are just picking up a bottle of water or, or whatever and there is always a cue to start con some conversation. You know, something happens, there is a loud noise, you know, the, the, the PA system goes off. These are all, you know, environmental sort of things which will get you on to speak. And of course, I am talking this in general, but sometimes you will have to do targeting networking. You know, you will see that this is the sort of people that I want to meet and then find a way to get there, especially for, you know, young entrepreneurs who may not otherwise know these people and we will come to that later on. Uh, th that is what you were saying, you were saying, you know, the Americans smile at each other and say hi, whatever and, and we, we actually do not and we sort of look very grim and, uh, you know, serious when we are sitting in in a conference, not, not maybe on the last day, but on the first day, all of us were looking sort of, because we, we are in general a little shy. So, the first thing is, you know, you smile at the person who is sitting next to you and, and, you know, that is the way to start the communication, because that is the first thing of it, it not be anything verbal, but that is the way to start communication. And, and then is to, you know, approach the person and say, hello, this is me, this is what I do and we will we'll come to the next stage of what you should say because, you know, you do not have a whole lot of time to say what you have to say and start with some, uh, you know, small talk, that is how you start, you know, say, it, starting with, you know, the, the classic example is about the weather but you could, when you are in a particular context, you can talk about how this last speaker was, whether he was good or he is bad or, or whatever and that is a way to start the conversation or how did the session go and, and you know, IITs, the, the rooms are good, the rooms are bad or whatever, you know. You can, that, that is the conversation that uh, you can sort of start with and, you know, what made you come to this event, what are you planning to do, just getting to know more and more about that person and as you do that, you would expect similarly, uh, you know, questions coming to you and, and that is how the conversation will start. You know, this is how do you introduce yourself is, you know, you have to, because nobody in, in an environment where everybody is trying to network and there are specific networking and, you know, <coughs> events which happen. I do not know if you are aware of Thai, uh, 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 it is called the Indus Entrepreneurs, NASCOM, uh, there are many such events which go on, you know, and an all India basis, which are purely networking events. There are other networking events like uh, for, for entrepreneurs, uh, there is something called Mobile Saturdays, there are, uh, there, there are whole, Proto.in is another event which happens uh, all over India, uh, city by city throughout the year which is again meant for startups to present their um, uh, sort of, a lot of events happen at uh, engineering colleges and MBA institutes including ours, which are meant specifically for early stage companies. So, there are business plan competitions, there are panel discussions, these are all events where you can network because apart from you, there will be other entrepreneurs, there will be people looking for jobs, there will be venture capitalists, there will be angels who are there in such uh, events. So, that is where you can, uh, anybody wants to share an experience of getting their first client or their investor through such a uh, networking event? Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, there at the event that you mentioned, Proto Dot In, yeah. uh, where I was uh, there primarily to meet uh, potential investors. Yeah. Uh, you know, we actually presented a, a, our demo there, and then that that actually helped as a forum where uh, we could attract uh, attract to our three potential investors, and then start negotiating with uh, them on when exactly and how much uh, to invest, what will be the valuation and all that stuff. Sure. So that has helped a lot in terms of uh, not just finding investment, but also in uh, getting their valuable feedback about what the product is and how to refine it so that it it can be better adapted to the market and all that because they are the people who have been into a lot of domains, uh, have a domain specific knowledge and they have a lot to offer in terms of, you know, how to fine tune it so, so as to, you know, better uh, position it in the market and all that. So, it, it helps in multiple ways. Sure. 
and you could as well find somebody who is not an investor who is just there as a visitor and he could be a potential customer or he could know somebody who could be of a potential customer to you so it helps in multiple dimensions to you know actually attend such events and network with people anybody else no i, I think in the large events i think the expectation with which somebody walks in hmm. has to be to look at i think what you started off with your networking you are not soliciting exactly i uh, that's a very good point yes and so if if you go with a mindset of i am here to solicit and you will walk out after that after two three events will say i don't want to go there because mm. nothing happened see in his case yes you were able to get somebody that they actually whether they will turn out to be investors or not is different mm. but the, the that network is going to help you to grow to the next level mm. and so there are a couple of instances where i met somebody that's eight years i had not looked at him at all just two weeks ago i found him on one of the networking sites right and he had published and i wrote a book and he said where did the book come from so we started interacting back again so sure. said i will you review my book i said fine go ahead and send it to me so he just shipped the book book across right so it's it, it was there was no connect at all 2001 was the last i had spoken to him and 2009 is when we connected back again but there was something which both of us could commonly say hey this is where we met apparently exactly. it was tai where we met exactly in one of those uh, events in tai right so it's uh, soliciting is you know, going with the intention of soliciting will be a uh, not the right idea to get into a networking yeah. space i'm saying don't build too many expectations from uh, uh, that but and the other thing is that it it may not be you was lucky that things happened uh, just after that uh, uh, proto dot in event but as in his case it it whatever the, the the you know the fruit of that networking happened uh, eight years from now so it can happen any time you know it, it there's no time uh, defined thing about networking so it, it the the event could happen much later yeah i just was thinking you know everyone is different change the pitch depending on the re recipient what happens is sometimes you meet people from different industries and there is no connect yet there are wonderful people you can learn from you can share from most if our context is learning it really helps because they have uh, something to share about sales process something to share about accounting processes or banking it's just not sales or you know finance sure. that is just important because uh, once you meet a person once you understand that he's good at this try to learn from that because that learning curve in terms of actual reality or learning because he has the experiential experience of doing it that helped me quite a bit when that context of uh, networking really helped me yeah because getting you know getting to know what are the pain points of your potential customers again networking is a very good platform as as you know to know what what is the pain point of your customer and, and the sort of feedback that you will get in a networking environment you will never get when you go straight in a, in a formal meeting with a potential customer so if you can just give a little more background about what happened you know in not not any business details but just you know how it sort of took place uh, you you're asking in terms of learning or yeah learning in terms of learning uh, for example you know business process learning you know for me i was facing this problem of uh, as i shared last time with all of you like you know my operator is having this issue with me and you know, i have to go back and uh, it's a simple idea uh, what he was telling me is you know have testimonials uh from other people who have worked uh, and at uh, times when this peak hours are there where the traffic is high uh, just see these 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 things so i just this happened in a completely offline industry you know it's it's almost like uh, we cannot relate both industries uh, the guy was talking to me and telling me um, that you no know, if my peak uh, hours are there it's it's something he is an installer you know he, he in, installs networking equipments uh mobile networking equipments and how they plan for subscribers and he was sharing is uh he is into installation and all that in mobile platform but i am into totally something else one specific point i remember you know the learning i got is each subscriber is allocated uh, 43 milli erlongs of uh, capacity you know uh, that is what is our bandwidth capacity for a phone and uh, that decides how many people can use it simultaneously a network he had that knowledge 
that is very relevant to my problem but for me he's an installation guy you understand no he's just an installation hardware installation guy you know you just can never predict at any point i could never predict that he might know this information which is very critical to my business to understand what is the network that is the cell phone towers are allocating you know the the wonderful people will be the uh, installers the network guys and the network administrators sometimes they give us so many insights that's the learning i got not yeah as as you it's not necessarily finance or marketing it could also be getting you know technical help getting customer feedback and so on and so forth in a networked environment talking about how to keep it whether in a social gathering or or even in a business platform you will meet different types of people so you you will have to you know make it if it is a potential customer you will you know put you know change it slightly if it's if it's a potential vc or an investor you'll change it so you'll have to keep on changing that but have those two three pitches sort of ready in your mind so that you're not and, and so that you can quickly sort of say it off this is specifically about you know events such as these where you know you can you to do targeted networking where for an event you know like tai proto whatever so you have to find out who all are going there uh, if they are talking you know if they are speaking at the at, at the event then make sure that you are there in first in the line b- before he leaves because there is usually a crowd in all these things all these events you know and and start again you have something to start to talk about the presentation that person made and and start from there onwards uh, getting to you know getting uh, getting introduced to him and so on and sort of create an opportunity to meet again so he said what are you what are you thinking about this what will you do in future so that there is an opportunity for you to or you can say that i have this thing would you like to would you like me to come and meet you sometime that sort of thing so that the future so the closure of that short meeting is that there is another meeting that you are going to have with that person the most important thing that once the event is over we all go home the cards go here and there and and you know we we are back so emailing the person you know sometimes you know you might want to use the back of your card to to write about the person the event because the, for example he remembered where that person met him so after 9 years is very difficult to remember but if you write down where you met this person what did you talk about because people will remember these little little they might not remember the place but they remember what you talked about so there is an immediate connect you reconnect at the same level as you did you know uh what are one two three years ago so that the event and the connect must be captured somewhere so maybe you know put it back of your car and the other thing is that how do you build nurture that network is by providing them even though you're no longer you know face to face being in touch with them you know virtually linkedin uh, facebook there are so many sites you know sending emails sending greetings find if you remember something that person needed or would be interested in there's an article uh, about that person you can send it to him say i read about your article and so and so it was very nice whatever just to keep that otherwise with with time the 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 connect starts deteriorating you know and if if the, there are set of people you want to remain in touch then you will have to do that and they will prioritize you you can't be doing this all all that you know all through your time but you have to say okay this is a category this is b category this is c category these are the guys i always want to remain in touch these guys you know once in a while and and c is you know just a new year greeting to to you know keep in touch and never know what might happen any thoughts on that you know how do you keep in touch with your network any anybody wants to share any thoughts on that i actually use the linkedin and facebook okay and email these three apart from uh, sometimes it helps on new year they send greetings to you or you give your number across mobile number the greetings on a new year or those kind of occasions 
And then because you are in Facebook, you know when his birthdays are or his or her birthdays and, and all those things also happen. Uh, there is another tool called Plaxo. Yeah, there is uh, Plaxo is yeah, another tool, so yes. That helps you update uh, your uh, location, your, uh, exactly. what are you up to, I mean, yes. you're changing phone numbers, changing your location and everything. It gets synchronized across all the people who are in the Plaxo network. Yes. So let us say you are uh, shifting your office and uh, you need to update your address. So it's not necessary that you have to send a mail to everybody saying that I'm moving or we have moved. Just right. update it on Plaxo and it gets uh, synchronized with every people on the Plaxo network. Okay. So that is one tool that I use. Uh, another aside is maybe you know your sc uh, the school that you went to, the college that you went to, the engineering college. Try to also be in touch with those people because you know I in a particular batch if you know those you know, 100, 200 people, then many of them will be in a position to help you. Sometimes we forget our own, you know, school and college uh, networks, which are extremely, as they, they say, this old boys network that really works, you know, uh, not only in India, but everywhere else. So that's extremely important. So that's the sh end of it. So more questions, more experiences sharing. There is one more thing that I would like to add. There is, uh, like today everybody is connected in the virtual world. So there is one more place called namesdatabase.com. Okay. So if you have want to connect to anybody who is uh, already there on the virtual world, it searches and categorizes them by various tools. Okay. Like Orkut or Facebook. Uh, it categorizes them by your school or by your college. And uh, if you just search in once, so it keeps you sending a reminder, okay, I find, found a person named so-and-so. Probably he might turn out your friend or not. Okay. But that's the way you can search people. You have, uh, for ones who have, you've not been in touch with. Right. So uh, I just want to touch upon one important aspect of networking that I guess is not covered. Okay. Uh, one uh, very, very effective way of, you know, keeping in touch with people is to actually provide them some lead in something that you might have come across that could benefit him. Exactly. That is the best way. I mean, once you once you provide him, hey, I I, I found this. Uh, I found I found one of my potential customers who might be a, your customer too, or you know he may not be of use use to me, but he, this is somebody maybe who, whom you can pursue. So that will give him uh, a lot of confidence in uh, you know uh, you know that will that will register in his mind that you have done him a favor, and he will he will uh, you know register in his mind that. He has to, you know, reciproc reciprocate back sometime, and then that will register his, in his mind that you know, whenever he goes to and talks to somebody, he'll have me as well in mind, uh, you know, you know, in order to explore whether or not you are a potential customer to not just me but also any of any of the people in my, uh, you know, close vicinity. I hope you understand what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. So, Absolutely. So, so, so whenever I talk to somebody about, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the form of a potential, when I, if I see him as a potential customer. After I talk to him, I may I may find that he's not my potential customer, but I still continue the talk. Not. Yeah, I still continue the talk because I know I, I there's a possibility that you know some of the people that I know, uh, you know, might be interested in this guy. Absolutely. So I'll just pass on his reference to him, and that'll be of great value to him as well as the person who I'm passing to it. Absolutely. So one of the principles of networking is that you know A and you know B, and and you act as the you know the facilitator between getting A and B to meet and then doing some business together. And the advantage is that both A and B, whoever, maybe A sold to B or B sold to A, whatever really happened, that is not so important as both A and B will be willing to do a favor for you. Yeah. And, and the whole idea of networking is to also share your resources, whether it's skills, contacts, information with the others, that's how it, 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 it builds up, that's how it, it grows. I just want to share on uh, something which uh, I'm fortunate to know a little bit. I don't know whether uh, some of you are working on it or not. It's called social network analysis. Uh, it's an amazing science in itself. Uh, it really helps us uh, open uh, as entrepreneurs to what could be the pot potential things we can address and we can look at it very seriously. It's called social networking analysis. and. Uh, there are a couple of research institutes. One is based out of uh, Europe and another is uh, based out of um, US. Uh, but these two institutes do quite a tremendous work in terms of social networking analysis. 
And another way of uh, looking at social networking is through visualization. Uh, I really recommend visual tools. There are amazing visual tools to look at uh, how you can benefit from LinkedIn. You can just log into that portal. And, you know, uh, I know there are a lot of tools. You know, you just have to Google them. You have to use the word visual uh, social networking analysis tools. So you'll get amazing tools. You have to use them. Use it on LinkedIn. Use it on Facebook to generate business leads. This is this, these are the uh, good ways of doing. I just thought I'd share that. Sure, wonderful, yeah. Um, for some people, it is very difficult to communicate with others. And um, they are not comfortable going and introducing themselves and talking to them. Sure. Uh, breaking the, uh, the ice. Uh, ice break, hmm. uh, the ice is very difficult for them. So, sure. there is a program by Landmark Forum that definitely opens you up. It breaks your barriers and um, you are very comfortable interacting with people there after, after you do this program. Landmark Forum conducts its programs here in Pune, uh, sorry, Mumbai, Hyderabad and Bangalore also and at okay. various places. Okay. They have a website and if you go there, it does tra transform you, it uh, helps you communicate with people freely and um, you know if you go with an agenda ki main iske paas jaunga in this program and I will try to get something from this person and then it is most probable that it will not happen because yeah, yeah, that's by, the point uh, you are making, absolutely yeah. Mm, and then you will be disappointed and uh, then you start feeling uncomfortable, you are unhappy, it shows you start exuding that kind of an aura and you, you cannot communicate with people then thereafter and then you will shy away from such uh, programs. But this is uh, one program which does help you uh, to open up and yesterday I have purchased two books from this bookstall here which is in the campus. One is what do you say after you say hello mm -hmm. and another <laughs> book by Edward D. Bono, how to make yourself interesting. Yeah. And, uh, it's like a, how to make yourself interesting by Edward D. Bono uh, has a lot of uh, exercises to be done, you know. <laughs> so I thought, okay, that will be very nice if I go through that. And even if you can go through those books, I think that will be really very nice. No. The website is uh, landmarkeducation.com. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, another platform to network is uh, not really a platform, but uh, amazing uh, places while travel while traveling. Okay. It so happened that I was going to attend a wedding in uh, Kerala and an old couple uh, in the train got in from Coimbatore. So uh, they were uh, they were old but very young at heart and they began, the con began a conversation and eventually I got to know uh, when they understood in what business I was in, I got to know that they were looking for a person uh, who could build a web application because they were uh, having a ancestral old 100 year old house which they wanted to let out for foreigners okay. and they wanted an online portal for the same and uh, that's how I uh, helped them and you know got Not that contact. Today. We are still in touch today and he was, he is uh, one of the prominent persons in that area because he, ha he has a very big restaurant also and it was amazing contact which yeah. I got on the train. <laughs> so, so don't even underestimate a train journey or a bus journey. You, you never know when your, you know, when that network is going to help you. Fine. Thank you very much. So